Hello, I'm Isaac Ostrom. I'm a licensed tile and general B contractor in Northern California. I've been licensed since 2003. Thank you for watching another one of my videos. So today, I'm really excited to show you how to maybe make a gift for your wife or your significant other, or if you're a lady, maybe you wanna make this for one of your friends. But it is Christmas time, and it might be a little bit late. Today is Thursday, uh, six days out from Christmas, so I usually get all my shopping done like the week before, start making my gifts, but this is a really cool way to use up a scrap piece of marble or stone and make something really cool, and it's something you can get done in a half a day or a day's worth of work. It's a really thoughtful gift, and I just wanted to share it with you. I've been married for 21 years. My wife and I have been married since 1998, and I'm really lucky, I'm really blessed with a wonderful wife, and I know she really appreciates when I make her a gift. So I wanted to help you guys along, and if there's any advice I can give you, it's that marriage isn't easy, relationships aren't easy, they take work. Just like your trade, when you're looking at me to teach you how to do tile stuff, I've had to look at other professionals for help. It's been a lot of work, uh, it's been a lot of sacrifice, but it's the most wonderful thing I've ever experienced in my life. And so I wanna share this with you. When you make a gift for somebody, it really means a lot. It means you thought about it, you were thoughtful, you took time out of your day to actually make something. And that's one of the wonderful things about the trades too. We get these skills and we get to use what we know and what we've learned to make somebody's day a little bit better. So I hope you get something out of this video. I hope it works for you. And this is just a great tip for, for a really thoughtful, nice gift for somebody. So, so what I did is I got this marble remnant from my granite fabricator who does all our countertops. So if you're ever looking for scraps, look up a granite or stone fabricator in your area. Usually they're throwing a ton of material away. Uh, these little scraps can't be used for a countertop. Usually anything under uh, 25 inches or so, they're going to end up just throwing in a scrap pile. So I would reach out to a local fabricator or it's, if it's the one you, you work with, usually they'd be really happy to help you out with something like this. But this is a beautiful piece of Italian Carrera marble. It's a timeless, classic marble that really goes with anything. So, uh, I'm going to be making a cheese board or a cutting board with it. I have this piece. So once you get the piece of marble, uh, you really only need a few tools. If you're a tile setter, you probably already have these tools. If you're a homeowner or, or DIY, you can purchase these tools for other projects or uh, they're really handy to have around the house and they're not that expensive. So I'm going to show you what I use. So my main cutting tool that I'm using is a Metabo grinder. This is a W9-125 quick Metabo and it's a variable speed grinder, and there's, there's two, two main types of grinders. If you go to your big box store, you might not be able to find this. You might have to buy it online or from a tile shop in your area. But the main difference is it has this dial, which allows you to control the speed. So when you're cutting, if you want to cut with it, you turn the speed up, and it'll, it'll cut really nice. But if you want to polish or drill holes, you can dial it way back to like 1,000 or 2,000 RPMs. And what that'll do is it'll keep the polishing pads on there. If you try to put polishing pads on a regular grinder, everything's just going to spin off. So I have my grinder, my cutting wheel. I have a Velcro backer pad, which this is going to go on, screw onto the grinder. It's got a 5 8 arbor on it, and it's got Velcro, or they call it hook and loop. Uh, but I just call it Velcro, and it's flexible. You can see it has, a, it has a little flex to it. And that's important when you're going in, into little nooks and crannies. It's a lot easier to use than the hard backer pads. I have um, sandpaper discs. So these are silicon carbide sandpaper discs. It comes in a set with different grits. I'm just going to use the lowest set of grits. I'm going to use the 80, the 120, and the 220 because this is a honed marble. I don't want a really high, high polish. Uh, the higher grits or if you're trying to get that high sheen, high polish finish, this is a piece of honed marble and I want it, I'm going to actually chisel the edge and make it look kind of rough. So the, the three different pads is all I'm going to use. 
And, and I don't take much time to talk about PPE or personal protection equipment, but I want to make it a point today. Wear safety goggles, wear ear protection. Uh, I got a dust mask and gloves. So get your equipment. It's, it's fairly inexpensive. You've seen a lot of my videos where I'm not wearing it. I don't suggest that for you. If I'm making these videos and everybody out there is watching them, please take care of yourself. Uh, I have some hearing damage probably from running wet saws and everything for many years without wearing any ear protection. Uh, luckily have not had any major eye injuries and I've spent a lot of time not wearing eye protection, but I do recommend for my viewers, I care about you guys, take care of yourselves when you're cutting these things. Okay, so I got everything marked up real nice to about how big I want these cutting boards to be. Uh, I'm gonna be using uh, my grinder with this DeWalt four and a half inch grinder blade on it. I picked this up at Lowe's. There's other different brands, but this one stood out to me. I don't know why, I like the look of it. And it was only about 30, 40 bucks. So very affordable to get one of these cutting wheels. And I'm also gonna be cutting dry. I like to cut dry whenever I can. I don't like using water, it's just messy. I don't like to have to change my clothes, but when you're cutting dry, you definitely wanna use a vacuum. Use your shop vac to get all that dust out of there so you don't dust up everything that you're cutting around. So, so let's go ahead and start cutting. Okay, so now that I got all the pieces cut to the approximate size, I'm going to go ahead and start chiseling them. Uh, I'm doing a chiseled edge, so what I'm going to be using is a little cold chisel here, like a, a three-quarter inch cold chisel and just a regular hammer. And uh, you need a nice, firm, concrete surface to do this on. And so let's go ahead and start chipping up these edges, give it a nice rustic look. Okay, so when you're doing a chisel strike, I'm starting it maybe about a quarter inch off the edge of the stone, and you just want to give it a nice solid strike. Oh, I just, be careful, I just hit the surface. It's going to give that a little more character. <laughs> And you don't want to take off too much, but just this will give it a nice rough edge to it. And you can manipulate, you can manipulate this chisel to kind of give some, if, if you want more waves in it, you can twist the chisel a little bit. Like my corners. So the corners I want rounded, I'm not going to, so the, the corners I want to have a nice little round to them, so I'm going to take a little more off of the corners. So I'm just going to do that all the way around my edges. Okay, so now that I got the basic shape that I'm looking for, I don't want it to be perfectly square. I want it to kind of have just a, a free flowing look, something that's hand chiseled. 
So, um, but what I'm going to do next, now that I got the, the overall chisel done, is I'm going to go ahead and just take any of the sharp points off of my chisel just with my hammer here. Just kind of smooth things out a little bit. And even some flakes on the on the top or something I'm kind of going for. You can see there's a little flake onto the surface. I even like that that look. But I'm just taking any of these little sharp points off. Okay, so I really like the shape of this guy. This is going to be a nice little serving tray. It's not too big, but it, it's a good shape and size for, um, you know, a presentation. You could have, like, your cheese. You'd have some, some nuts. You could have some you know, raisins or craisins or something, and um, maybe some rolled up meats on here. It would be really cool. So what I'm going to do is start with my 80 grit pad here and I'm just going to start sanding down the edges just to kind of smooth it all out so it's not sharp so it's easy to wipe off and clean. So I'm starting with 80 and let's see what that gets us. And I'm going to turn, turn my speed all the way down otherwise these discs will want to fly off. You always start with pressure before you turn it on. Okay, so you can see what an 80 grit pad did. It smoothed everything out really nice. I could probably stop with just the 80 grit. On marble, it's so soft, you can really get into all the nooks and crannies and create this really nice, smooth profile on a chiseled edge. Granite would be a whole different story. I wouldn't try this with granite, it's too hard. But the marble is soft, easy to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and step up one more pad. I'm gonna go with the 120 just to give it a little more shine on the surface. And I think I'll call it, but I'll check it again after I do it. Okay, so the 120 got a nice little sheen going on it, but I'm going to step it up to the 220 just to darken the top here, but it's really smooth. I'm really liking the finish. Let's go one more pad. Let's hit that 220, see what it looks like. Okay, so we're through the 220, and we have a really lovely finish on this. You can see that everything has been smoothed out. You still see the chisel marks coming through, but the sheen matches on the top, and it's just really, really nice. Looks handcrafted, and this is a really nice piece of stone. Very nice. So I'm just using some acetone just to clean up any residue that might not let us have a good bond on the bottom. Cleaned up that quarry tag and heating up my hot melt gun and we'll get these babies on here. So I got these bumpers. Again, they have double-sided sticky tape. I'm going to put a dollop of hot glue down because I think that will bond a little bit better.
Okay, so I got the finished product here. I got my little bumpers on there. Marissa, I love you, honey. I hope you enjoy the gift that I made you. So I hope this video encourages you to go out there and make a gift for somebody, whether it's your wife, your girlfriend, your mom, or a friend. You do not realize how much of an impact you can have on somebody's life. The world today really needs this. We need our relationships to be better. We need to tell people that we love them when we feel like we love them. We need to not hold back. It's so easy to sit back and think that we don't matter, but our words and our actions can literally change lives. And even if that's just one life, even if that's just one moment, one day, that we're able to do that. So I encourage you guys to keep working. If you're in a relationship and you see the same patterns repeating themselves, if you've been divorced, remarried, if, or if it's just girlfriends and you're seeing these same patterns repeat, odds are it has a lot to do with you. You need to take a look at yourself, see what you're doing wrong, talk to a counselor, talk to somebody you respect, talk to somebody who's been there before and done it. They will help you get rid of some of those old ideas, some of those old actions, some of those old attitudes that are holding you back from living your best life and having the people around you love you. So I'm gonna end with this, I love you. I love being your tile coach and Merry Christmas. We'll see you on next video.